guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're going to talk about this thing right here, which I'm calling the ultimate cluster in a box. And the reason it's the ultimate cluster in the box is because it has absolutely wild specs for a single box that's a multi-node system. In fact, there are a total of eight nodes in this system. There are 120 cores or 184 threads. If you're scratching your head, they're both ARM and Intel cores and we're not even counting all the ones that are in the system. This has 624 gigabytes of memory, over eight terabytes of solid state storage. And on the networking side, it has over 1.5 four terabits per second of network bandwidth. Now, before I show you exactly how this is all working, what I do want to do is point out why this is happening. So the first thing is that in 2013, we actually had a couple mini cluster in a box series on the STH main site long time ago. And really the mini cluster in a box V2 was by far the most successful one of those. The first one had Atom and also Raspberry Pi, but the second one was all Intel Atom C 2000 series chips and specifically boards that we stacked inside of a little chassis and we put them all together with a little Netgear switch and we had a cluster. And that was a kind of cool cluster. I think it had like something like 64 gigabytes of memory, 24 cores. And so I had meant to show you guys this one and you may have seen it on the STH main site a couple times, but this is basically like a 10X box versus what that was. And the only reason that we're actually doing this now is because of my recent trip to St. Louis, Missouri, where I was at Supercomputing 2021, the conference. And we have three videos from that. We have the liquid cooling video. We have the top 10, you know, best of video. And then also have a chat with Intel's Roger Kadori talking about how they're going to get to Zetascale 1000x the performance that they're at today in about, you know, five or so years. But while I was at the Arch, I ran into somebody that you might recognize from YouTube. Oh man, look at this arch. This is awesome. And there's like nobody here. Man, you know what would be cool? If I could get somebody to go and take my photo. I, I'll, I'll take a picture oh, for you. Oh, would you? Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. I, I like your shirt there. Oh, it's, thank you. I think that, is that like Serve the Home or something? Yeah, it is. I'm uh, Patrick from Serve the Home. Oh, pa you're Pat. I'm Jeff. Jeff, Jeff Gearling. You're the Raspberry Pi dude. Yeah, this is my Whoa. city, St. Louis. Awesome. Yeah. What a, what a coincidence that I would meet you here. <laughs> well, I, I'd love to take your picture, but but uh, I, I remember you did a video on like a small mini cluster and I'm actually thinking of doing something like that. You're gonna do a mini cluster, like a mini cluster in a box build? Yes. Hey, I have an idea. Since you do all the Raspberry Pis and we do the big servers, what if we both built clusters and we just kind of did our own thing and like maybe people would want to see that on YouTube. I, 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 I want to see that, I, that sounds fun. Awesome. What? How this? Let's go build them and maybe in like two weeks we'll get together and we'll just kind of compare notes and just kind of show off what we made. Are there any ground rules you think we should have? Uh, well, so I'm building an ARM cluster. That's my plan. Okay. So how about we only do ARM processors? No, none of this x86 stuff. Okay. Try, try to make it small and energy efficient. What do you think? Well, well, I can make something small for us and mostly based on ARM. Sure, we can do that. <laughs> All right. And we, I think we should also have at least four nodes. That should be our goal. Four nodes is an absolute minimum. That's good. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, hey, thank you. It's awesome meeting you here. And why don't we go and like, let's meet up in two weeks and we'll see what we made. I think that's the plan. Cool. It's kind of amazing who you randomly run into at an arch, huh? But that really set up the entire idea behind this. We had to use ARM, we had to have at least four nodes. And so the trick was that I kind of knew that Jeff was actually going to use the new Touring Pi 2 that he has. And by the way, I'm super jealous because I can never get one of these things, but he's like the Raspberry Pi guy. So of course, you know, he already has one and he's been beta testing it for a while. So I think he's publishing that on his channel today. Of course, go check out that video. We'll link it in the description. It's also linked in the main site article that you'll see linked here as well. But while I knew what Jeff had in terms of his Touring Pi 2 cluster, I kind of thought like, I don't want to go backwards in terms of core and memory and stuff like that from what we did in 2013. I wanted to kind of do a 10 X and it just so happens that I kind of knew that I had this sitting in a box ready to go, or I thought I had this sitting in a box. And so I was able to dust this thing off and show him. And he was absolutely surprised. We're going to get to that in a second. So in those two weeks, we actually just kind of jumped on zoom and I said, okay, well let's go see the boxes. And so he showed the touring pie, which we're going to go look at. And then I showed him this box, but before we get too far, in that conversation, I know you want to see what's inside. So let's go look at it. Let's do a little spinny. And so let's go jump on the call with Jeff and check this thing out. All right. So it's been a couple weeks. 
Have you finished your build? Yes, I did. All right, well, I want to see it. And how about we both reveal our builds at the same time and then, you know, we'll see what they look like. All right, I think that's an awesome idea. Are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Yeah. Ah, I notice you're not holding yours. Can you, uh, can you turn it? Is it something you can hold in your... Yeah, it's a little, it's a little bigger than uh, yours, I guess, is... Uh, it's definitely, definitely maybe not as easy to hold in one hand, although I do hold servers, I guess, that are heavy in one hand a lot of times. But maybe, maybe I could turn it, and then that way you could see it. How does that sound? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it even has, like, a fancy fancy glass window. Oh, my. So, um... You have fancy RGB lighting. Can you... So, so what is inside of that thing? I'll take this off. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's just kind of a pretty pretty basic cluster. Uh, you know... Kind of, kind of simple. You said we said I believe that the what were the rules that we had to have uh, at least four arm nodes in our class. Four arm nodes. Yep. And we wanted to have it all in one box. And all in one box. All in one box. Single, nice uh, fractal design chassis. And I see yours is all like together. You don't have like a case or anything on it, but it's all put yeah, together. So, well, for this first build, I, I built it. This is a BC1 mini benchtop ITX uh, frame. And I wanted to build it here because I wanted to be able to do everything to it and kind of experiment on it. I, right now there's a SATA board and a Coral TPU and stuff, but I'm gonna do some other things before I put it into my rack. Awesome. So I, 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 I kind of want to guess maybe a little bit bigger, but what's, what's exactly in yours? Do you mind kind of just kind of going through it real quick? So this one has four Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 nodes. Each one is 1.5 gigahertz, uh, four core CPU with eight gigs of RAM. And they're booting off of these uh, little micro SD cards. I could have got, gone with the MMC modules, but they're not in stock anywhere. So this is what I could get. And then it has uh, SATA on the board. And right now I just have one two terabyte SSD plugged in for storage for the cluster. But my, my eventual goal is to maybe run some websites or other things off of this using Kubernetes. So I'll probably put another uh, drive on there and have them in RAID 1 for redundancy. And hey, what, what, what big board is that? Oh, so the... The board itself is a Turing Pi 2, uh, and it comes out in probably a month or two. This is an early, early prototype of it. There's a few hardware bugs that I actually ran into that I'm helping them fix, and the firmware on here is nowhere near complete, but it, it boots up these four Pis and has a management backplane, and it can be managed over the network or uh, via other other methods too. Awesome. Yeah, I so I, I unfortunately couldn't get one of those because... Um... I think they're on pre-order, and then I tried getting the old one, and I could never get one. Um, so I couldn't really design mine like that. So instead, I did this. So what? That it doesn't look like a regular motherboard that you have inside of that thing. Or it, maybe it is, but is is it like PCIe cards with the processors on them, or how how the heck is that thing working? Yeah. So I probably should kind of go through what what this is, huh? Yeah. Okay, now Jeff clearly has the more power efficient, more cost efficient version. I think his thing is like 600 bucks or so. But if you want to get way more than 10x in terms of performance and capabilities, well, this is something that you will you can step up to. It's also going to cost more than 10x. But I just kind of want to show you what absolute crazy town in terms of a cluster in a box looks like in 2021. First off, what we have here is we have the AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro processors. And specifically, if you don't know what these are, we have a whole thing on the STH main site. I think also on YouTube, but these are basically the AMD Epic Rome series processors that, you know, have a channel memory, they have the PCIe lanes, all that kind of stuff, but they're really designed for workstation use. So there is a chipset. And so that is exactly what we have here. And in fact, we have a 64 core, the 3995WX. And that gives us a total of 64 cores and 128 threads for our x86 component. Now, what you're also going to see here is you're going to see the fact that we have eight DIMMs, and these are actually DDR4 3200 DIMMs. There are DIMMs, and specifically, each one of them is 64 gigabytes each. Now, since we have eight of those, that gives us a total of 512 gigabytes of memory on the main x86 system. And by the way, if you do follow us on Twitter or something like that, you may have actually seen these before because one of the original DIMMs in this actually uh, kind of decided to go up in smoke 
and Micron was actually nice enough to go and send us a uh, replacement. So we definitely do have the replacement in there now because that was pretty scary to see a system that, you know, kind of costs a lot of money kind of start smoking. Um, never want to see that again. So that was just, uh, just kind of what happened. Now, if you think you might have seen the system before, you actually have because this was on the STH main site in our Asus Pro WS, WRX, ADE, and then a whole bunch of other stuff motherboard review. And that is really the Threadripper platform that we're using. This is definitely a high-end board. It's absolutely awesome. And one of the cool features of it is that it actually has built in, they call it ASMB 10 IKVM, which is their management solution. So that's your IPMI management, which means that there is a small graphics processor in there. And it also allows you to have out-of-band management so you can like log in remotely, have IKVM and all that kind of stuff. It also means you don't need to have a GPU. You can actually run this like a server. And that's basically how this one is being set up. But this is an absolutely huge motherboard and a lot of the connectors are actually on the edge even though we're not using them right now. But we actually have this housed in a fractal design Define 7XL chassis. And yeah, we totally have a fancy liquid cooling solution for this. But the other star of the show is clearly not just the x86 side because that only gets this one node and that is definitely not a cluster. I mean, we're not gonna call the A-speed ARM processor that's on here. We're not gonna call that its own node. Really, you know, that's just the x86 side. So how do we get the ARM and how do I meet that requirement of having at least four ARM nodes? Well, that's actually this right here. What these cards are, are actually the Mellanox, now NVIDIA, Bluefield 2 DPUs. And specifically, these are the 100 gigabit per second ones and they are the VPI ones. We'll get into what that means in a second. And also, if you don't know what a DPU is, well, we actually have a video on what is a DPU and also how to tell the difference between a DPU, a smart NIC and other things. But the easiest way to understand what these are is that they actually have a Bluefield 2 DPU processor on there. And that DPU actually has eight ARM Cortex A72 cores. They, uh, these particular cards, they only run at two gigahertz. The reason for that is if you actually go higher, you have to go and use an auxiliary power input like you would for a GPU actually on these network cards. And so you can't actually, uh, or it would be at least a pain to go do that in this chassis if we didn't have the lower power two gigahertz ones. Now, although these are two gigahertz ARM cores and eight cores per card, there are also other things. For example, we have 16 gigabytes of memory, so two gigabytes per core. There's also 64 gigabytes of flash storage on here. And the reason that you get 64 gigabytes is that each card actually, well, you can run a Linux operating system on it. For example, all of ours are running Ubuntu. So the other way to look at it is that I managed to fill up all of the slots of the system with cards that each have eight ARM cores, 16 gigabytes of memory, and 64 gigabytes of storage, plus each one of them has networking. But before we get to that networking, just so you guys know, the Bluefield 2, um, the cores are not super fast and it's still a very much a pretty early product. So it is kind of cool to do things like technology demos and stuff like that. There are some use cases, but realistically, these are things that we're gonna start seeing in the future. However, if you wanted to kind of you know, figure out what this would kind of be like. It would be something like an AWS Nitro card that they actually use in AWS to kind of do all their provisioning stuff. That's kind of the idea behind a DPU. And that's basically what we're using here. But make no mistake, these are definitely their own servers. Now on the networking side, Bluefield 2 supports a number of different options. We actually have like the 25 gig ethernet cards. And then there are also these cards, which are not just 100 gigabit ethernet. They're also VPI cards. So they can run either 100 gig ethernet or they can run InfiniBand. So if we want to, we can actually go run InfiniBand, like EDR InfiniBand at 100 gigabits per second, kind of like you would use in a high performance computing cluster. And these things are actually PCIe Gen 4 by 16 cards, which means that we can actually drive a total of two 100 gigabit links out of these things. And that gives us just an absolute ton of bandwidth. Seven cards, 200 gigabits per second each gives us 1.4 terabits per second of bandwidth. And that's in addition to the two 10 G base T or 10 gigabit ethernet ports that are on this ASUS motherboard. And in case you're wondering, I know you're gonna get the question, so let's just kind of address it here. You can totally use all 14 100 gigabit ports with that kind of base x86, so the Threadripper Pro system, you can totally use that on here, just so we're all clear. And although we have the 14 100 gigabit ports, the two 10 gigabit ports, there are actually another eight networking ports on the system because both the x86 side with the Threadripper Pro and the Asus motherboard, as well as each of the NVIDIA cards all have their out of band management ports. So there's another eight ports that we need for that as well. Of course, NVIDIA knows this. And so there are provisions to be able to go and 
access the cards directly from the x86 system without having to go over external ethernet but you do actually have those additional ports and what we actually do with all these cards is we actually run them separately which gives us basically our eight node cluster in a single box okay and just for all the youtube commenters yes there is wi-fi 6 in this as well now in terms of storage, of course we have all of the 64 gigs on each of these cards, but we actually are running two 3.84 terabyte Micron SSDs that are brand new, uh, actually on the M.2 slots on this motherboard. And the reason for that is really that the original idea was that we were gonna run four SSDs in one of the cards, but then we would have to remove one of the DPUs so we'd have one less node in our cluster. And if you're trying to create a giant cluster in a box, that doesn't seem like a road to success. So in terms of just the breakout real quick, that gives us a total of 624 gigabytes of RAM, 512 of course on the x86 side, and then 112 gigabytes total on all of these DPUs. With the Micron M.2 storage on the main board, plus all the 64 gigs on these DPUs, we also have a total of just over eight terabytes of storage in this platform. Networking, I mentioned that we have 1.4 terabits per second. And if you're kind of thinking like, hey, that's a lot, like what the heck are you doing with that? Uh, just so you know, one of the next videos that we're gonna have in probably a couple weeks is really gonna talk about how this uh, studio and down to my office and stuff, just throughout this building, there are now over 1,700 individuals individual fibers and over 100 kilometers of fiber running through the walls, providing all that network access. So we don't have to go run things like having 100 gigabit switches and stuff in the studio. We can actually have them remote and kind of out of the way. And we can also do room to room without and you know, doing direct networking without having to do switches and you know rerun cables or anything like that. So that is the purpose of all of that fiber. We're gonna get to that. That is gonna be super cool. I don't really know many places that have more fiber than what we ran. Uh, it's totally insane. You guys are gonna love that. But yeah, that is why we can actually handle the fact that we have 14 100 gigabit per second ports here plus the also the 210 gb t and then the eight out of band management ports and yeah we have wi-fi too so overall let's face it jeff's box is way more practical especially if you're just trying to get started and you know trying to learn these kind of clusters and stuff like that on the other hand this is really just there to show you kind of what scaling up a lot looks like now this is you know, not necessarily like a $5,000 platform. It's also probably not like a $10,000 platform, but you could probably build this thing for maybe 15 or so, which is very expensive, I know. But on the other hand, it's not much more than a normal server and you get an eight node cluster, including both x86 and ARM, everything you can put Ubuntu on and basically go run your cluster. So something like this is definitely more costly. It's more bespoke and, you know, frankly, it's not as practical, but I did want to just kind of show folks, you know, what is possible today in 2021. This is definitely more than a 10x improvement over that cluster that we made in 2013. So I'm actually kind of happy with this one. And frankly, I'm also just kind of happy that I finally got to show it off. And again, I just want to say thank you to Jeff for actually pushing me to go and, you know, display this and kind of show you guys. I think it's super cool. This is definitely the ultimate cluster in a box. I really have no idea what I would do to make something better than this today that is just cooler overall. This is literally using some of the coolest technologies that we could possibly get. And so I really like this thing and hopefully you guys did too. On the other hand, just so you know, I am again, very jealous of the fact that the Turing Pi 2, like I can't get one and I think it's really cool and it is a really good way to get started at a lot lower cost. So definitely go check out Jeff's video. We're gonna have that linked in the description again and we'll also have it linked on the STH main site. And now that we're in December and we've kind of got through this November rush, I'm super excited because I get to start doing some fun projects like this. We're gonna have that fiber optic build out which is just gonna blow people's minds. So if you haven't already, well, why don't you give this video a like, click subscribe, turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.